Okay, folks, I think we're going to go ahead and get started with this piece. Thank you so much, and then we can get you registered afterwards if, if you need to do that. Um, thanks for staying in here with me. My name is Charmin Lee, and I'm coming to you from North Carolina. And I think the common thread that we've heard already this evening is starting early, and that's one of the main reasons that, that I am here um, with you this evening is to really promote that, project it, and and in the competitive market of the college admissions um, arena, how is your student going to stand out and make him or herself um, very competitive in such a competitive market? How are they going to stand out and increase their marketability in the college application search or anything they want to do after high school in that level? So that's one of the things that I wanted to talk with you about this evening is making them stand out, increasing their marketability, and really having the student own the process along the way. And, and that's, that's, I think, a very important message to take away tonight and, and having them take ownership of this process um, with your help, obviously, and your guidance and support and encouragement. But I think it's, it's important for the students to, to um to have that message as well. Um, when, I, when I'm with a student and, um, and we're looking at this, this college um, application um, just kind of as a game plan, I do ask them, you know, what do you bring to the table? And so one of the things that I, I wanted to, to talk about um, is well, first of all, if you have that sheet that, that you got when you came in, there are six components that, that I would like to talk about. And if you have that readily available to kind of go over with me, that would be very helpful. And these are in no particular order, but we've, we've kind of laid them out as GPA and rigor, testing, extracurricular, essays, and the recommendations. And again, in no particular order, but in every single application that your son or daughter will embark upon um, later in the years, there, there will be the common denominator of that GPA. So that's why we've, we've kind of um, put that as, as number one, because that is the most indicative factor and component that will determine your student's collegiate performance on how they've actually performed on the high school level as well. So having that GPA and, and performing well amongst their peers and making them competitive, that GPA is going to be um, far and, and f truly the, the most important out of all the common denominators. Uh, schools are going to rank those in different priority order. GPA will be number one, the rigor might be number two, and it might be the same order as you have them on your sheet, but you might be looking at schools that could be test optional, which means that the ACT, you don't even have to submit an ACT to that particular school. So if they are a test optional school, which more and more schools are becoming test optional, um, and they're putting more emphasis on other components, like a GPA, possibly an interview, extracurricular involvement, etc. So different priorities are going to be established with, with each particular school. But, okay, so after GPA, um, we can just go straight to rigor. And obviously, your school system carries that rigor. Um, colleges and universities in the state of Tennessee know Blount County. They know Maryville Senior High School. They know your rigor. They know what kind of school you're coming from. So that's going to be very, very helpful in and of itself. Um, your website is fantastic. Your profile is, is fantastic, so definitely those are, are some highlights that, that you already have um, going for your student by being in the school system. But the rigor is going to be determined, obviously, with your student and, and how they can um, perform and not taking every AP course that's offered, absolutely not, but definitely taking a challenging curriculum that will make them competitive for, for their strengths and their talents. So 
if they are AP material, then they should be taking AP courses. If they're honors, et cetera, you, you understand um, obviously what I'm saying, but definitely adhering to those strengths um, and, and playing to those and, and engaging in the rigor of, of their choice um, and their abilities, I think, is, is very important to mention as well. So um, that brings us to the testing. Obviously, Tennessee is an ACT um, state, so you're going to be taking um, very, very a multitude of, of opportunities um, to see where the benchmarks are, and those are going to be wonderful. And then, obviously, um, sending in those those multiple testing, hopefully, to a school of your choice that will super score. So if you have more than one ACT testing um, opportunity that you will be submitting, that school will actually be able to super score your test and take maybe your best math from the first time that you took it and combine it with your best science from the second time that you took it. So they'll be super scoring those particular testing um, opportunities and you have control over what you submit to the colleges and universities, which is definitely to your favor and to um, and hopefully to your benefit. The, the essay component that I wanted to touch on is actually something that um, can kind of humanize the process. You've got your GPA, you've got your rigor, and you've got your testing, which are all numerical or you know curriculum-based. But the, the latter three, um, starting with the essay, begins to sort of humanize that process for your student. So obviously, you know, encouraging writing, encouraging the reading um, as they are embarking upon the high school classes and the high school years and just even reading or, or writing creatively as an extracurricular pastime would be would be highly encouraged as well. So in enhancing the writing skills and enhancing the, the essay component is going to be, I think, um, pretty critical because every word on every um, essay that you submit or the student submits, obviously, is, is going to be read by an admissions professional and, and an admissions decision will be made based upon, upon those words, obviously. Um, one, a couple things about, about the essay. Um, you're going to have multiple opportunities to, to pick and choose um, a topic. So sometimes it will be um, a personal statement. So, so just one of the messages that I wanted to, to um, give tonight is for a student to find something that they're very passionate about, that they can really, really be creative and, and let that passion flow in their words and, and definitely make themselves unique in this process. And um, a lot of students will write personal statements about their their relationship with their grandfather or their mission trip um, with their church to the Dominican Republic. And those seem to be very common threads, <laughs> very common themes that admissions folks will, will find um, in these essays. So having you stand out um, and having kind of a hook um, with this, with these essay um, topics is going to be, I think, very imperative to, to make you stand out, and that's going to be very helpful to make your, your application very unique. And with also with the essay, I think that taking a different approach with, with a lot of topics is, is also um, very, very helpful. Um, one of the best essays I ever read was from a student that, it was a personal statement, so she had um, 250 words, 250 to 500 words to come up with a very creative essay. No topic was given. It, it could be a topic of her choice. And she wrote from the perspective of being a chocolate chip cookie. So she wrote about being the best chocolate chip cookie that was ever baked, and her ingredients were, she was a swimmer, so her ingredients were her faith, her character, her integrity, her, her athletic ability with her swimming, and just her her overall personality of being very outgoing and how she viewed herself 
her bakers were God and her parents and her coaches and her youth pastor and just the people in her life that were very influential. Her oven was um, her home, her school, her church, um, the aquatic center where she spent most of her, her past time with her swimming. But she formulated this essay that about 20 years later, um, from being an admissions counselor at Elon University, I'm still talking about during my speeches. So the moral of this story is that essay was brilliant, and it was unique, and it was special, and obviously I admitted her to the university. Um, she was... Um, you know, just just a great writer, but she wrote from such a different perspective that I didn't want to stop reading it. And that's where you have to captivate your reader because they're going to be reading thousands and thousands of, of words and essays. So just my message with that is just as you go through this process, um, making it your, your words very unique. Okay, and then recommendations. And when, when you're thinking about recommendations, I know, you know you're thinking, oh, that's so far away. But I think the message now is that you need to recognize um, influential relationships that you're going to be making um, on the high school level. And having those students, I'm sorry, having your students ask those influential people, um, maybe they're teachers, maybe they are youth pastors, maybe they're coaches, to write letters of recommendation for them that will really represent their work ethic and their character. So these are the two really main components that need to, to kind of grace and, you know, and really embody a really strong recommendation. So the character and the work ethic. And if you get a teacher to write a recommendation, they want to see, you know, on paper, is the student really active in the classroom? Do they participate? Will they be an asset to my university or my college in that capacity? So that's also very important to recognize. And then last but, but not least, it's my favorite piece of the application, and it truly does humanize this process. And I think that this will probably be your biggest takeaway from the evening is how to stand out in an actual resume and how will you be packaged most effectively in this resume or your extracurricular involvement. You all are probably um, very good at multitasking um, as far as all of your activities right now. But in the in the coming years, when you go into high school, I think it's important to know that it, it might be quality versus quantity on your extracurricular activity sheet and what you're going to be doing in the summer before your ninth grade year. So it's summer before your ninth grade year. So next summer for, for you all that starts your resume. So you can loop whatever you do in the summer before your ninth grade year into the ninth grade year. And then it starts your, your extracurricular activities and your involvement. So ninth, 10th, 11th grade into the 12th grade. Um, the 11th grade is going to be obviously the most important and most imperative year because that is the last full year that colleges and universities are going to see before making an admissions decision. So even though your your senior classes will be on your transcript, no senior grades will be will be on that um, on that transcript at the time of admission or um, application. So the same thing for your extracurricular involvement. Everything that you do the summer before your senior year goes on your resume and then it's submitted with your applications. So I think the packaging of your your resume is absolutely crucial and, and the involvement that, that you have um, with that. And so I think volunteering, I'm sorry, there, there are four additional things um, that four additional components with the extracurricular um, involvement that, that um, need to be addressed and just, just highlighted. And those are going to be leadership and so any type of leadership opportunity that, that you carry maybe in the classroom or in a club or in um, an athletic team if you are a leader or a captain or a co-captain. Um, or part of an ensemble with fine arts, etc. So any sort of leadership opportunity, Eagle Scout, Girl Scout, those types of, of 
um, activities are, are key. Um, so leadership is, is big. And you don't have to have all four of these, but these are four to, to note as you embark upon this process. So leadership would probably be a big one. Volunteering and slash community service. So I, I, those are separate, but can also be linked together. Um, and the difference between these would be, these, these are examples. If you volunteer at a homeless shelter, um, or at a soup kitchen, you're volunteering. You might be volunteering individually, but you might be a part of a team that does a highway pickup that's being considered community service. So you can link those however you like. Um, some students do maybe Special Olympics with their soccer team, and they, they want to consider that as community service. So I think it's just how you, again, how you package yourself and package those individual um, accolades would be, would be really, really special. Special. And then, so community service and volunteering and leadership. And then lastly is going to be service immersion. And the service immersion is actually being immersed in an actual service project. And that would be possibly Habitat for Humanity or, you know, do, I know a lot of students are going to, to other countries involved with their youth um, leadership or their youth um, church, you know, doing a mission trip or, or whatnot. So being immersed in maybe building a home or, you know, a, a library for, you know, an orphanage or something of that nature, whatever your project might be, but it would definitely be a service, service-related project. So those are all um, very impressive, very necessary as far as just building a resume. You don't have to do all of them, but any types of volunteer opportunities, there's many, many volunteer opportunities I know around Blount County um, in the Knoxville area. Etc. You don't have to go out of the country to have these these opportunities. But if you do go out of the country, make sure you take pictures and you document your your time away so you can put it on your resume and and have that um, as an honor. Um, before I I wrap up and you can go and, and register, a couple more things that I wanted to to touch on. And actually, last night we we were in here with the rising. Freshmen, and they, um, I, we did, you know, the, the same, the same spiel. But um, I had a parent and a, a parents and a student come up to me afterwards, and they were so excited because when I was talking about visiting college campuses, um, I just I used the College of Charleston as an example because it's a vacation spot, and um, if you're at the beach or you're visiting Charleston or Hilton Head, I mean there's there's colleges everywhere. So so I told you know I just my message was take advantage of your surroundings, you know do your research and and just try and you know kill two birds with one stone type of mentality and. They they were going to Charleston in about two weeks, and they're really excited to go check out College of Charleston. So, so I think you know, just the message is, if you're visiting, definitely go by the admissions office. And even as as a as a rising ninth grader or as an eighth grader, you can you can make these touches and get on mailing lists. It's never too early to start those relationships with colleges, especially if this is your dream school or if this is this is a place that you could really see yourself because of a certain program. So it's definitely never too early to start that. And colleges keep track of that. They keep track of these touches. They keep tra and that's called actually demonstrated interest. So they keep track of that. They, they know who you are. And then by the time that you are really focused in on a particular major or really focused in on the application process to a certain school, they've got a really wonderful documented um, piece of, of filing system for you that they can go back and say, wow, you know, their, their demonstrated interest is, is pretty severe. So they're, they're definitely very, very interested in, and we need to take notice of this student, obviously. Um, there is a college fair at Maryville College in the fall, and I really highly encourage you all to go to that um, as, as eighth graders next year because you're right on the cusp of, of that freshman focus. And I think that the sooner that you are exposed to that, I think would be fantastic. Again, talking to decision makers behind those, those booths, gathering information, starting a little library um, of sorts of of colleges and universities that that may um, catch your interest in talking about it as a family and and really really having some 
some supportive discussions on, on what you're looking for down the road and then how your curriculum here um, supports that. And, and just kind of, you know, marry the two and, and, and see how those coincide for sure. Um, the last thing that I wanted to, to talk about is there is a territory manager for every single state. So if you are looking at into the state of Tennessee specifically, for colleges, universities, um, there is going to be a territory manager that handles your county and your high school, and, and they know that already. There's someone designated for that, so that needs to be your point of contact. If you're looking at, at schools out of state and, and you want to travel to Florida or to Virginia or to North Carolina and you do your research, there is going to be a person in that admissions office that either has the state of Tennessee or they have Blount County, or they have the city of Maryville, maybe pair it with Knoxville. So there's someone um, in an admissions office that will have um, this area as their point of contact. So that's that's your that's definitely your contact. So if you do go on vacation and you stop by an admissions office and you can say, you know, this is where I live, this is this is where I go to school, and is there an admissions person that that handles um, my territory and make them familiar with with your with your area, make them familiar with Maryville and and make sure they know um, that, that you're on their radar at that particular moment. Okay? All right, that concludes that concludes my presentation and I'll be around afterwards if you have individual questions. Thank you. Okay, so again, you might be saying my child's a seventh grader, but this time next year they're going to be an eighth grader, and the eighth graders, last night, we were talking about your four-year high school plan, what courses you're going to take, and you need to have an idea of what post-secondary you're interested in because you don't want to get to that junior year in high school and find out that you have to have five AP classes to be even considered as an applicant at a particular school you're interested in. So it's not too soon. Take eighth grade next year to start exploring these things, to start thinking about um, your your path through high school, uh, maintaining those good grades, uh, even though eighth grade courses don't count on the transcript, they do the next year. So you have one year to kind of research and start seeing how this works and where your passion lies when you start to think about that four-year plan we're going to be building out with, uh, with you this time next year. So thank you for coming. Uh, feel free to email us, call us if you have questions. Um, we're still down in the tech labs. If you want to go down and take a look uh, at the registration process online, uh, you're welcome to do that. But remember, you can register anywhere through your child's login uh, up through uh, Sunday evening, Monday morning. Thank you for coming.